Welcome back to Florida Pediatric TV. We are filming this at the end of the fifth week of the 2014 legislative session. So Doug, booster seats is still moving. What's yes, happening? it is. And uh, as a matter of fact, right now the bill is up in committee. And uh, I think w when we finish this filming, uh, I'm sure that there's going to be success on that issue. But just as a reminder, the Senate bill has one more committee to get through. And I think the Senate is just waiting for the House bill to uh, go a little further. And they've got a plan for uh, whose bill will ultimately pass. And Representative Perry's bill is being heard, as I said, in its final committee at the moment and uh, will then go to the floor. So uh, after many years of uh, you all working on that issue, uh, it looks like this year is going to be the one to get something passed. Uh, that's terrific. <clears throat> we'll keep our fingers crossed. <clears throat> the uh, five-year ban, the issue about um, legal immigrant children getting into kid care. Yes, well we had some success uh, recently with uh, Senator Garcia's bill being heard in its first committee. So the posture now for both of the bills is that they've each been heard in their first of three committees. Um, I'm not overly hopeful. It's, it's very good that they've been heard in the first committee, but uh, there's still a good ways to go. Okay. All right. It's encouraging. And scope of practice is another issue that we've been involved in. It is. And, uh, you know, this is a big priority for the Senate or for the House, I'm sorry. And uh, the House has got their bill all teed up. The Senate bill got through committee. The Senator Grimsley is the sponsor and it got through committee. It doesn't go nearly as far allowing independent practice of uh, the, uh, the nurses. However, it did get through its first committee and it still has a considerable amount of opposition though in the Senate. And what about step therapy? That's another one we've been following closely. It is. Uh, in the House, that bill was heard in its first of four committees. We'll know this afternoon at 4.30 whether it gets on the agenda for the next committee, and I've been working to, uh, with the coalition of people on that to try to get it heard. In the Senate, it is in good shape. It actually was on the agenda last week in its final committee. However, the sponsor um, held it back, temporarily postponed it in order to address some technical issues that the staff found. So I'm not concerned about the prospects of its passing in the Senate. Uh, it's just slowed down because of some technical issues. Okay, and another issue that we've been involved in is the uh, e-cigarettes, electronic cigarettes, and access to minors. Yes, uh, the Senate bill by Senator Lizbeth Benequisto, the majority leader, is, has passed the full Senate. It's in House messages and the House bill is now on the House calendar. There are significant differences between the two bills. The House bill contains, it, it reserves the right to the state, it preempts the local authority for all regulation dealing with the nicotine dispensing devices, these e-cigarettes and so forth. Uh, and it also uh, preempts to the state the authority of regulation dealing with the sale of tobacco products. And those two preemptions are, uh, I think, what cause us concern, certainly, and what got the Heart Association and the Lung Association, a lot of other advocacy groups, uh, very exercised about those two bills. I'm told that Senator Benequisto is not going to accept those preemptions in her bill. Uh, I think there's some wrangling to go as uh, we have some horse trading here. <laughs> Okay, and I believe there's a press conference supposedly Monday uh, about yes. this. T tentatively uh, scheduled for Monday at 10 a.m. Uh, no final details on that yet. Cancer, lung, and heart are all together um, organizing this press conference, and we're supporting them. The Senate bill is okay. The House bill is the problematic. One. Correct. <clears throat> okay, and... Um, Last on our list is the EHR Meaningful Use Dollars. Uh, has there been any change in that? No, there's not been any change, but uh, I'll take this opportunity just to update people on the status of the budget as a whole. The, the House and the Senate have both um, passed their budget proposals, $75 billion proposals. So now they are in the posture for budget conference. The conferees have not yet been appointed by the presiding officers. Uh, however, indications are that they may begin conferencing in a week from now, so toward the end of this coming week. And uh, on the issue of the electronic health records and the meaningful use dollars, 
There's been no change on that. The House and the Senate are both lined up on in terms of money for the current fiscal year and the next fiscal year. So that issue is in very good shape. Okay, so I think um, just to recap for our members who are concerned about that, um, those who have attested for this year, which for the state, the fiscal year is until the end of June, um, will be able to get their money. The bill, the appropriations bill that's in process includes language which uh, gives the state the spending authority to distribute those dollars. It just won't take effect until the governor signs the budget. It doesn't have to wait until July 1 when the budget takes effect, uh, but it does have to have his signature. So once that occurs, then those monies should be available for distribution. That's correct. Okay, very good. Thank you, Doug. Right. And we'll be back next week with another update. And as usual, please let me know if there are topics we haven't discussed that you'd like us to and if you have any questions.